Dear students, in the last session, I have explained important uh, equations related to chapter current electricity. So, let us uh, discuss more on the remaining topics of the same chapter. So, one of the important uh, topic in electricity is a combination of the resistances, series combination of resistances and parallel combination of resistances. So, let us see what are the important uh, equations to remember in series as well as uh, parallel combination. Series and then parallel. So, when do we say that the resistors are in uh, series? When they are connected end to end such that the current through each resistor is same. So, in series combination current is the same through all the resistors. Here I have taken R1 and R2 are the two resistors. Whereas in parallel combination, the resistors are connected between uh, same two points R1 and R2 such that potential difference is same, potential difference across each resistor is same, which I am going to take it as a V. And in series combination, potential difference across the combination is equal to sum of the potential difference across each resistor. Whereas uh, in parallel combination, the mean current which is I is equal to sum of the branch currents I1 and I2. So that I is equal to I1 plus I2. And if there are more branches, you can write I1 plus I2 plus I3 and so on. Here also, if there are more branches, sorry, more uh, resistor, then V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 and so on. If there are only two resistors, then we can find this uh, value of V1, which is the potential difference across the first and uh, V2, which is the potential difference across the second. That is V1 is equal to R1 into V by R1 plus R2. Similarly, V2 is equal to R2 into V by R1 plus R2. So, these are the potential difference across the two resistors. Now, how do we get that equation? Because V is directly proportional to R because uh, current is the same. Current is same. Not only V directly proportional to R, but even P is also directly proportional to R. P is equal to I square R, where I is same. Now, based on this, we can write the ratio of the potential differences, you know, which is V1 is to V2 is equal to R1 is to R2. Whereas, power consumed P1 is to P2 is equal to R1 is to R2. Here, we can find the branch current. That is, I1 is equal to I R2 by R1 plus R2. There is a current through the first branch and the current through the second branch I2 is equal to I R1 by R1 plus R2. And current is always inversely proportional to the resistance. V is directly proportional to R, but here current, V is same here. So, that is why current is inversely proportional to R. What about the power consumed? The power consumed is inversely proportional to the resistance. That is based on P is equal to V square by R. V is same. So, that is why P is inversely proportional to R. So, here we can write the ratio of the current. I1 is to I2 is equal to 1 by R1 is to 1 by R2. Inverse ratio of the resistance. So, similarly, the power consumed P1 is to P2 is equal to 1 by R1 is to 1 by R2. So, these are the few equations. Let me write the rest of the equations on the side. So, this is a series combination and on the other side we have parallel combination. So, what is the effective resistance of the combination when many resistors are connected in series? So, Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. That is some of the individual resistances. For two resistor, Rs is equal to R1 plus R2. 
and for n identical resistor rs is equal to r by n and most important rs is always is always lesser than the sorry always greater greater than the highest value it's always greater than the highest value used in the combination in parallel combination reciprocal of the effective resistance 1 by rp is equal to sum of the reciprocal of the individual 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and for two resistors in parallel rp is equal to r1 r2 by r1 plus r what about for uh, n identical so here it's a not r by n it's n into r so here rp is equal to r by n and rp is always lesser than lesser than the least value lesser than the least value used in the combination now here when potential difference will be equal the potential difference will be equal only when the resistances are equal so v1 is equal to v2 is equal to v by 2 because the applied potential difference divides equally only if v1 is equal to v2 is equal to v by 2 only if the resistances are equal only when r1 is equal to r2 similarly the current branches equally only if the resistors are identical that is i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i by 2 why I'm dividing by 2 because there are only two branches are there if there are three branches you can divide by 3 okay again only if r1 is equal to r so you can see how many uh, differences are there between uh, the series and the parallel combination and do remember all these uh, differences and uh, numericals based on that can be very easily solved if you are very thorough with these uh, differences between the series and the parallel combination of the resistances. So I am going to consider a particular uh, combination of the resistances where 12 resistances are joined to form a cube all are identical resistor each having resistance r so 12 such resistors are joined to form a cube and i'm going to consider point a here and exactly opposite corner so this is one corner here and this is the exactly the opposite corner like this. So, what is the effective resistance between A and B? So, that is what we are going to calculate. Now, we can simplify this. There are different methods are there. So, one of the method is uh, called uh, the uh, nodal method. Okay. So, identifying the nodes by numbering them and then rearranging the circuit. So, what exactly this nodal method? So, please uh, see the diagram here. So, from the node A, start numbering the other node based on the uh, path. Okay. For example, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to move in this direction. And when I move, so this is the first node that I'm going to come across. So I'm going to number it as one, you know. So from here, this is the first node that I've come across. This is the first. Okay. From A, this is the first. This is the second. So, I will write it as a 2. And that is depending on the path. Remember, from the node, from A, this is the first node that we come across. This is the second node that I am going to come across. Similarly, I am going to change the path. So, in this, I am going to start like this. So, this is the first node that I have come across. And then if I move further, this is the second node that I have come across. Yeah. All right. And on the side again. So, here we have the first node that I have come across correct this is uh, one then we have uh, here so this is uh, one and this is uh, two even if you go in this path it's one the same can you check that this is first node and in this path again this is the second node 
sequence we are writing. If you find one more node, you have to write it as third. Now, why are we not marking this one here? Because that is a terminal across which I have to find the resistance. So, across that we don't write or uh, at that particular point we don't mark any nodes. So, you can see now we have marked all the nodes. So, starting from a first node and this is the second node in this path. Again, first node, second node in this path. First node, second and again here first and the second, right. Now, whatever that we have marked so far is from A. Now, let us mark a similar node, correct, starting from B now, okay, starting from B, All right. So, let us start from here. So, from B, now this is the first node that I am going to come across. So, therefore, just write next to that uh, number, okay. This is the first and this is the second. Similarly, from here, this is the first, this is the first and this is the second. Similarly here, this is the first node and this is the second, all right. So, you can see we are now done marking all the nodes. So, here the name of this node is 1 and 2, this is a 2, 1, this is 2, 1, this is 1, 2, this is 2, 1, this is 1, 2, okay. Now, what is the significance of this, uh, the number that is given? Now, these numbers signifies that the node with identical number, listen carefully, the node with the identical number, they are at same potential. They are at same potential and when they are at same potential, we can always join these uh, nodes. So, that is the significance. Because of the symmetry, when we apply potential difference across B, we find that the nodes with the identical numbers are at same potential. So, therefore, this is 1, 2, this is 1, 2. So, these two are at same potential. That means I can join these two nodes. There is 1, 2 here, correct? There is one more 1, 2. Again, that I can join. That means this point, this point and this point. They are all at same potential. When they are at same potential, you can join all the three points together. Similarly, we have 2, 1 here, we have 2, 1 here, we have 2, 1. Again, three such nodes. They are also again at same potential and you can join them. So, I am going to rearrange this circuit now. So, I am going to draw here. So, this is A. And then after A, we have uh, a node 1, 2. And again, after that, we have another node, which is a 2, 1. And then we have uh, the point B, like this. Now, from A to 1, 2, there is one resistor. Here, there is another resistor. To this, there are three resistors. Can you see that? From A to 1, 2. See, 1, 2, and then 3. So, I am going to draw three resistors from A to 1, 2. This is 1, and this is uh, the second and this is the third, clear? So, so we are done with uh, this resistor, we are done with this resistor, we are done with this resistor, correct? Right. Now, check this, from 1, 2, there is one resistor to 2, 1, okay? 1, and again from 1, 2, 1 more, which is uh, 2, again from 1, 2, to 2, 1, which is 3, and again from here, 4, and again from here, that is uh, 5. So, check this here. So, we have from 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 1. 1, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 2. Correct? Then, 1, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 3. 1, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 4. 1, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 5. And 1, 2, 2, 1, resistor number 6. So, basically, there are total 6 resistor from 1, 2 to 2, 1, okay. So, I have to draw 6 register, 1 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then 5 and then 6 like this. Are you clear with this? And now from 2, 1 to B, so 2, 1 is here. From 2, 1 to B, there is 1 register, 2 register and then 3 register. So, 1 and then 2 and then 3. So, I told you very clearly, initially this cube is formed 
by connecting how many rest of together 12 so here we have 3 6 and another 3 so total 12 resistors are there now if they are identical it's very easy to find the effective resistance see three identical resistors in parallel r r r parallel we get r by 3 R, R and R parallel, again we get R by 3, R, 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 total 6, R by 6 and all these three combinations are in series. So what is the effective resistance? So let me write that here, that is Rs is equal to R by 3 plus R by 6 plus R by 3. So 6 is LCM here, so we have 2R plus r plus 2r that is 5r by 6 is the effective resistance between a and b so hope you have understood the the nodal method of finding the effective resistance but in the examination in the exam you don't get this much time to simplify so that's why these relations you have to remember uh, as one of the case, one of the special case. So we do have uh, the other cases and that's what I'm going to explain. That's what I'm going to give uh, the equations directly. But all the rest of the cases are solved in this way only. Okay, right. So let me draw that uh, cube and then I'm going to tell you the various cases across it. Okay, so we have uh, 12 resistor. So I'm going to name these nodes here, corners A, B, C, D, and then here E. So just now we have found between opposite corners, that is between C, E, R, C, which is opposite corners. between the opposite corners. The effective resistance that we found is 5R by 6. Now, between AD, that is here, between this and this, that is RAD, which is the across the face diagonal. This is a face across the face a diagonal what is the effective resistance it is 3r by 4 between a and d and now between c and d r c d that is between adjacent corners okay between c and d, adjacent corner or it can be like this also between c and d so the value will be 7R by 12. So these are the special cases which you need to remember. If at all they ask uh, questions based on that, directly you can use this uh, formula. And all these, uh, the rest of, we have derived this 5R by 6. The other two equations also can be solved by the same nodal method. But what is important here is suppose instead of the resistor, if there are identical capacitors are there, 12 identical capacitors are connected in this manner. Then instead of the resistor, we have to replace with the capacitor. Then between C A D, that is across the face diagonal, that is here, the face diagonal, the effective capacity will be 4 C by 3. Just inverse, you know, that number. Then C C E that is effective capacity between uh, C and E that is uh, the cube diagonal or opposite corners correct that is equal to 6 C by 5 and finally across the adjacent uh, corners adjacent corners it is a C C D is equal to 12 C by 7. So it's, that's why it's very easy to remember. 
exactly opposite of the relation that we get in a resistor. Okay. So, directly we can make use of this formula because it is a time consuming to solve or to find the effective capacitance or resistance between any of the two uh, points that is given in the diagram. Okay. Now, whenever resistors are connected in parallel, then there are many branches. So, how to find the branch currents when there are many branches are there? Now, in parallel combination, potential difference across each resistor is same V. And that V is equal to main current into effective resistance of the parallel combination, which is IRP. That is also equal to potential difference across each resistor because it is same. So, what is the potential difference across the first resistor, which is I1 R1, across the second, it is I2 R2. I2 R2 and across 3 it is I3 R3. So, using this it is very easy to find the branch current. What is the first branch current? I1 is equal to IRP by R1. I2 is equal to IRP <coughs> by R2 and I3 is equal to IRP by R3. So, this formula we can use it for any number of branches. Main current into effective resistance of the panel combination by resistance of that branch. But if there are only two branches, only two branches. So, you can definitely make use of these uh, formulas even for two branches that is I1 is equal to IRP by R1 or I2 is equal to IRP by R2. But for two branches, what is RP? RP is R1 into R2 by R1 plus R2. And when you substitute that here, RP is equal to R1 into R2 by R1 plus R2. You will get IR2 by R1 plus R2. Here you will get IR1 by R1 plus R2. So, remember these formulas are applicable only for two branches. We cannot use that when number of branches are more. And if, if there are n identical branches, then the branch current is always equal I1, I2, I3 and so on that is equal to I by n where n is the number of branches. So, current divides equally only when the resistances are identical. So, branch current formula is also very important to solve uh, many numericals. So, the next important uh, concept is a combination of cells. So, we have series combination of the cells and uh, <coughs> parallel combination of cells. So, in series combination, the cells are arranged in such a way that the positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of the other. Whereas, in parallel combination of the cells, positive terminals of the cells are connected to one point and all the negative terminals are connected to the other points. And here we assume that the cells are of different EMF, E1, R1, E2, R2, E3, R3 and so on. Where what is E1, E2, E3? EMF. So, what is R1, R2, R3? Internal resistances. So, same thing even in the parallel combination as well. <coughs> now, just like combination of uh, series combination of the resistances and the parallel combination, in series combination which quantity is same? In series combination current is same. So, same thing is well given here. So, in series combination of the cells, the same current flows through throughout the circuit. And in parallel combination, it is potential difference is same. So, here current is same through all the cells and here potential difference is the same across each cell. <coughs> okay. 
and in series combination the total potential difference across the combination is equal to sum of the potential differences across each cell and in parallel combination the main current is equal to sum of the branch currents. <coughs> How to find the terminal potential difference across each cell? So we calculate that using V1 is equal to E1 minus I R1. V2 is equal to E2 minus I R2. You can see the current is the same. How to measure the currents here, the branch currents? I1 is equal to E1 minus V by R1 and I2 is equal to E2 minus V by R2. If there are uh, more branches, you can extend this equation for the other values. So, some more differences between series and uh, parallel combination of the cells. Now, in series combination, effective internal resistance or equivalent internal resistance. Since the cells are in series, that these resistors also in series. So, that is why R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. In parallel combination, 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 and so on. Depending on the number of cells, if there are only two, you can restrict to R1 and R2. What is the equivalent EMF, you know, in series combination? It is the sum of the individual EMF, E1 plus E2 plus E3 and so on. But here in parallel combination, we do not have a, a separate individual formula for E equivalent. It is always the ratio of E equivalent by R equivalent is equal to E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 plus E3 by R3. If you want to find E equivalent, then find R equivalent from here, do the substitution, then you will get equivalent EMF of the cells of the combination. In both the circuits, current formula is the same. Current, that is the main current. Main current I is equal to E equivalent by R plus R equivalent, where capital R is the external resistance connected to this combination, capital R. And R equivalent is the effective internal resistance and E equivalent is nothing but equivalent EMF. So, this equation is valid for both the circuits. What is the terminal potential difference across the combination, which is E equivalent minus I into R equivalent. Again, that is the terminal potential difference across the entire circuit, not individual. Individually here we calculate like this, V1, V2, V3 and so on, but this is across the entire combination. Again, valid for both the circuits. So, we prefer series combination when we want uh, more EMF or more potential difference, whereas the parallel combination is uh, preferred when we want uh, high current. So, for high current, parallel combination is preferred and then for high EMF or for high potential difference, the series combination of the cells is preferred. In my last explanation, I have uh, Assume that the cells are of different EMF. Now, if the cells are identical, what if the cells are identical? Then in series combination, and in parallel combination, we have few more differences to learn. That is, these differences uh, can be used only if the cells are identical. So, if the cells are identical, what is the R equivalent? So, R equivalent is equal to N into R. 
just the way we write the formula for uh, equivalent in, uh, resistances or when n identical resistances are connected in series. So what are the equivalent resistance? It's nothing but nR. So we get the same format. In uh, parallel combination, R equivalent is equal to R by M. I will slightly use uh, different variables so that you don't get uh, confused. What is N stands for here? N identical cells, interfaces of N identical cell. What is M here? Again, M number of identical cells connected in parallel. Here, N number of identical cells connected in series. Okay, that's R equivalent. Now, what about the equivalent EMF? Equivalent EMF is nothing but N into E. It's N into E. Here, equivalent uh, EMF E is, very interestingly, is independent of the number of uh, cells. It doesn't depend on the number of cells. And that's equal to, same as one single cell. Remember, even though there are M number of cells are connected in parallel, effective EMF is same as that of single cell, one cell, E equivalent is equal to E. So, what is the formula for uh, current then? I is equal to E equivalent, which is NE, divided by R plus external resistance into NR. So, this is the expression for current through the circuit consisting of N identical cells in series. So, what is the expression for current here? I is equal to effective EMF, which is E, divided by external resistance, which is R, plus internal resistance, which is R by M, R by M. So, when you simplify that, M comes here and on simplifying M goes to the numerator. So, this is the formula for the current through a circuit consisting of M identical cells in parallel. So, we have a few more conditions. What is that condition? If external resistance is much, much greater than the total internal resistance, if R is much, much greater than NR, then this term will get cancelled. We get I is equal to NE by R. So, if this condition is satisfied, then the current through the circuit is maximum. So, when do we get maximum current? If the external resistance is much, much greater than the internal resistance. Here, if the internal resistance, that is R by M, if R by M is much, much greater than R, or R is much, much greater than MR, this is greater, then this is to be neglected then the expression for current is m e by r. So, current through the series combination of cells is a maximum when the external resistance is much much greater than the total internal resistance and uh, current through parallel combination of cells, identical cells is a maximum if the total internal resistance is much much greater than the external resistance and this is the expression for maximum current in the two combinations. So, again these formulas are uh, exclusively used when the cells are identical only, otherwise these equations are definitely not applicable. Okay. So, now I am going to combine cells, certain number of cells in series and many such cells in parallel. So, this is called a mixed grouping of cells. In every row, I am going to consider n number of cells in every row and let there be m number of such rows in parallel. So, this is a mixed grouping. Certain number of cells are in series and many such uh, branches, you know, which branches means it has to be in parallel. So, what are the total number of cells in the entire circuit? Total number of cells. The total number of cells is m into m, mn is the number of cells. Now, what is the equivalent EMF? equivalent EMF of the entire uh, circuit, E equivalent. 
So, E equivalent depends only on the series combination of uh, cells. It is independent of the number of branches. So, that is why E equivalent is nothing but N into E, where E is the EMF of each cell. Every cell has same EMF. Now, what is the equivalent resistance? You know, interresistance are equivalent. What is the resistance of each branch? N into R. N into R. Because they are all in series. And how many such parallel branches? M. So, divided by M. Therefore, R equivalent is nothing but N R by M. And once you get uh, equivalent EMF and equivalent interresistance, it is easy to write the expression for current. So, what is the expression for current? I is equal to E equivalent, which is N into E, divided by R plus N R by M. N R by M. And on when you simplify, you will get I is equal to M N E by M R plus N into R. So, that is expression for current through mixed grouping of the cells. Now, if the external resistance, you know, here, if the external resistance, if it is equal to the total internal resistance, if it is equal, then current through the circuit becomes a maximum. So, this is the condition for maximum current. And what is that maximum current that we get? I max. So, I max is equal to N into E. So, here I have to replace NR or I can replace NR by M, you know, this one NR by M by R capital R. So, I will get NE by 2 capital R, NE by 2 capital R. Or you can even replace like this. Here, this MR can be replaced as NR. Here, MR can be replaced as N into R. And when we do that, this N will get cancelled and you will get ME by 2 small r. So, that is the value of maximum current. And what is the condition for maximum current? The total external resistance must be equal to the total internal resistance of the cells. Now, regarding the combination of cells, there is one special case which you need to remember. That is when only two cells are connected in parallel. Only two cells. Having EMF E1, R1, E2, R2. There is branch current I1 and then I2 and I is the main current. Now, only two cells are connected like this with the positive terminal of both connected together. There is one more uh, possibility which is something like this. So, what difference you get to notice? So, in this case, positive terminal of one of the cell is connected to the negative of the other. So, what is the difference that you get in two cases? Since the resistors are connected in parallel, R equivalent is equal to R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. And here also it remains the same, there is no change regarding that formula because uh, internal resistance is independent of the polarity of the EMF. Now, what about the equivalent EMF? The equivalent EMF is E1 R2 plus E2 R1 by R1 plus R2. This is the equivalent EMF. And when you write equivalent EMF here, E equivalent is equal to E1 R2 minus or difference E2 R1 by R1 plus R2. So, what do you mean by difference here? Difference means whichever product is greater that you need to write first. So, that is the difference between the two equations where when cells of identical polarity or uh, same polarities are connected together, here cells having opposite polarities are connected to it together. In that case, the numerator instead of plus here becomes a minus 
and I didn't write minus because you need to write uh, the product which is greater. If e1 r2 is greater, then it will be e1 r2 minus e2 r1. If e2 r1 is greater, then the equation will be e2 r1 minus e1 r2. Understood? Now, what about the current? In both the circuits, the equation for current is the same, which is I is equal to E equivalent by R plus R equivalent. That's the same in both. And what about the terminal potential difference? The terminal potential difference formula is also the same, which is V is equal to E minus R, sorry, V is equal to E equivalent minus I into R equivalent. So, this will give you the main current through the circuit and this will give you the terminal potential difference across the circuit. And again, these equations are useful only for two cells in parallel, only two cells in parallel. In a circuit consisting of circuit elements like battery, then capacitor, inductor, resistor, we make use of something uh, called sign convention so that we can relate the various variable associated with the, a simple circuit. So I'm going to explain the sign convention used in resistor, in cell, in capacitor, as well as an inductor. So let me consider uh, a circuit consisting of only EMF and A and B are the nodes. Let V suffix A be the potential at A. Let V suffix B be the potential at B. And when you use the sign convention, first you have to decide in which direction you are going to apply the sign convention. That is called direction of traverse. That means you can start from A and you can move towards B. The other, you can start from B and then you can move towards A. So therefore, first you need to decide in which direction you are going to apply that, okay, direction of traverse. So first let me mark like this. It's from A to B. Then the rule is, since you start from A, write the potential at the initial point, V suffix A. Then look at the diagram here. This is a negative terminal, this is a positive terminal and let E be the EMF of the cell. We are moving from a lower potential to higher potential, lower to higher. And when we move from lower to higher, the EMF of the battery is uh, taken as a positive, that is a sign convention plus. Just like how we take sign convention, you know, in a lot of concept to distinguish concave lens, convex lens. Convex lens, focal length is taken positive, its power is taken positive. Concave, focal length and the power negative. So, the sign convention will help you to distinguish one from the other very easily. So, that's the sign convention plus C, lower to higher, okay. And then you equate this equal to with the potential at B. <coughs> Understood? Let me draw the same diagram. Potential at A, potential at B is the EMF of the battery. So, this time I'm going to apply the sign convention from B to A. So, start from B, therefore potential at B. Now, we move, we are moving from higher potential, so sign is negative of the EMF. Equate that with the potential at A. Now, if you refer these two diagrams, the diagrams are identical, same diagram, you know, there is no change. And uh, we applied the equation from A to B, here we apply an equation from B to A. But if you look at these uh, two equations, they are basically the same. Look at the two equations, they are identical. It's a VA plus E is equal to VB. Check this here. Take this E to the other side, you will get VA plus E is equal to VB. So direction of traverse will not change the equation or the sign convention. So that's why in any such circuit, first you decide from where to where you want to apply the sign convention or in which direction you want to apply or traverse, okay. So that's for the cells. So now let, let me consider uh, a resistor. 
connected between the two nodes A and B, where VA is the potential at A and VB is the potential at B, and R is the resistance and I is the current. And the rule to apply here is potential at A here. So first, okay, I'm measuring or uh, I'm applying the sign convention as we move from A to B. So first potential at A. And now, what is the potential difference across the resistor? It is I into R. I into R. And if the current is in the direction of the traverse, then I R product is a negative. What is the rule? If the current is in the direction of the traverse, if we are moving in the direction of the current, then I R product. I R product is nothing but the potential difference, okay, is minus. And then you equate this with V B. And by the way, whatever the equation that we are relating here, you know, V A plus E is equal to V B, V A minus V is equal to V A, all this. So this is basically from the Kirchhoff's uh, second law. It is also called as uh, the voltage rule. It states that the algebraic sum of the potential drops across the circuit elements is zero. Algebraic sum of the potential difference across each element of a circuit is zero and that's what we are equating at in every equation. Okay, so here if the direction of travel and the direction of currents are the same, then IR product is taken as negative. So let's try this uh, circuit by applying the direction of travels from B to A. This is R, this is I. So start from B, where I'll write the potential at B. And now we are moving in a direction opposite to that of the current. So what is the IR product? It's a plus, so it's plus IR. And that is equated to VA here, okay. So start from here, VB and IR product, I into R. We are moving in a direction opposite to the current. So that's why IR product is taken as positive. Here it's taken as negative because the direction of travels and the current are in the same direction. And again, if you check these two equations, they are identical equations. The third circuit element that I'm going to consider is uh, a capacitor. Point A and point B, this is minus, this is plus, and C is the capacitor. And Q is the charge on either plates, minus Q, plus Q. So let's apply these uh, sign convention as we move from A to B. So when we start at A, potential at A. Now look at the signs. We are moving from again lower potential to higher potential, lower to higher, just like the EMF, lower to higher, here also lower to higher, so therefore the sign is positive. Positive of what? Positive of potential difference across the capacitor. What is the potential difference? V is equal to Q by C, so that is the potential difference and that is equated with a VB, understood? The next uh, again same capacitor. Same charges, node A and a node B. Now, let's apply the equation from B to A. So start from B, so potential at B. Now we are moving from higher potential to the lower. So it has to be minus Q by C and equate that with potential at A. So we have completed three circuital elements. And I'm going to explain the last one, that is an inductor having inductance L and let I be the current, be the current, node A and node B. So again, one more uh, diagram, inductor of self-inductance L and the current is in the same direction, this is A and this is B. So here we are going to apply from A to B, here we are going to apply from uh, uh, yeah, A to B only. I will tell you what is the difference. In this case, this current 
increases current increases only then there will be uh, emf when i cross the inductor in this case the current decreases so when the current increases start from here potential at a then what is the emf induced in a in an inductor e is equal to minus l into di by dt and that's what we have to write minus l into di by dt where what is l l is a self inductance what is di by dt rate of change of current because the current is changing and that you have to equate with the b so that's equal to b clear so in this case when the current increases the sign is taken as minus now if the current decreases see the same direction there's no change in the direction if the current decreases then potential at a the sign is plus plus l into di by dt if the current increases it's minus l into di by dt if the current decreases it's plus l into di by dt and that is equated with the bp so this kind of sign conventions again which are very important to solve you know part of a given circuit where you can start from one node you can apply the equation till we reach the other node not for the entire circuit but for part of the circuit so this kind of uh, equation so we can apply that for the cell for the resistor for the capacitor and even for uh, the inductor as well we have uh, an important circuit called wheatstone network Now, what is a Wheatstone's network? A Wheatstone's network is one in which four resistors are connected in cyclic order in the format of P, Q, S, and R. P, Q, S are in cyclic order, and then there is a galvanometer having resistance G, and then there is a battery connected between the two nodes. There is a main current here, which is I. or it can be i1 plus i2 and that splits into two parts here i1 and i2 this further splits here into ig and i3 and that i3 will be equal to i1 minus ig and this current i2 splits into part which is already ig and the other one is i4 which is equal to i2 plus ig so in this which is network entire uh, network for certain combination of p q r and s for certain combination the current through the galvanometer becomes zero and when the current through the galvanometer becomes zero we say that the network is a balanced balanced network so what in by balanced network the balanced network is one where current through the galvanometer is zero which is ig is zero and when ig is zero potential difference across that is also zero vg is equal to zero because there is no current how do you calculate the uh, potential difference across uh, any device potential difference is given by current into resistance current into s that's why vg is zero now when vg is zero we can remove this galvanometer because there is no flow of current that is only when the network is balanced balanced network and when ig is zero vg is also zero so what is the balanced condition the balanced condition is product of the opposite resistances are equal that is ps is equal to qr ps is equal to qr It's the same as writing P by Q is equal to R by S. And when the network is balanced, these nodes, you know, A, B, C, and D, potential at B, potential at B, yeah, is equal to potential at D, potential at D. then potential difference because of that potential difference you know across p is equal to potential difference across r p across r not only 
that even PD across PD across Q is equal to PD across S. PD across uh, Q is equal to PD across across S. So this all this happens only at only when the network is balanced. Potential difference across this is equal to PD across this. PD across this is equal to potential difference across this. That's why these two points becomes points of same potential. And when the potential is same, no potential difference. That's why there's no flow of current. So this is the reason why there's no current through the galvanometer. And once we remove this, you know, what do they need to remove? Because there's no current, you know, it's as good as removing the circuit as good as uh, open circuit. In that case, if you remove this galometer here, this P and Q in series, P and Q are in series, R and S are in series. When P and Q, R and S are in series, we get P plus Q, R plus S. And when they are in parallel, effective resistance, R effective, is equal to P plus Q, P plus Q into R plus S, divided by P plus Q R plus S. This is the effective resistance when the network is balanced. For example, here if we have a 6 and then 3 and then 9 and then 2. 6 into 3, 18. 9 into 2, 18. So, network is balanced. So, we can find the effective resistance using this particular formula. Now, what if all the resistance are identical? Now, if all the four resistances are identical, P is equal to Q is equal to R is equal to S, then the effective resistance is same as that of one single resistance. Like if I connect uh, all the 10 ohm here, 10, 10, 10 and 10, then what is the effective resistance? It will be 10. We don't have to waste our time simplifying that because 10, 10 series will give you 20, here also will give you 20 and then 20 and 20 when they are in parallel, the effective resistance is equal to 10 ohm. So that is only if the resistance are identical, you know, P is equal to Q is equal to R is equal to S. So, this is about the balanced resistance network. Now, how to find the effective resistance if the network is not balanced? So, you have to make use of the Kirchhoff's voltage law and then write uh, plenty of equations. But we have uh, an equation which is ready made and you have to remember as there are a number of terms are there. So this is P, Q, this is uh, S and this is R, P, Q, S, R. So this is galometer. So between A and B, imagine if the network is not balanced. In that case, you cannot uh, neglect the galvanometer. You cannot remove the galvanometer. Okay, and if it is not balanced, the resistance between A and B is given by a formula which is P Q into R plus S plus P plus Q into Rs plus P plus Q into R plus S into G divided by P plus Q plus R plus S into G plus P plus R into Q plus S. So, this is the term. So, many terms are there. Maybe by repetition, you will be able to remember this particular formula. So, that will give you effective resistance in an unbalanced Wheatstone's network. <coughs> unbalanced Wheatstone's network. Now, if the circuit <coughs> is something like this, again it is unbalanced, but having a symmetry is something like this, P here and then Q on this side and here Q on this side and P on the other side. 
which is actually unbalanced Wheatstone's network because here P into P will give you uh, P into P is not equal to Q into Q here when the values are different, correct? It's again not a balance, it's an unbalanced. And when it is unbalanced, in this format it has to be, for example, 3 and then 4 and 4 here and then 3. It has to be in that format, okay? Then effective resistance between A and B, RAB, RAB is equal to, it's a 2 PQ plus P plus Q into G by 2G plus P plus Q. So, simplified version of this where R is taken as a Q and S is taken as P, then you will get this particular format. Okay. So, just practice these equations so that uh, directly you can find the effective. Because in balanced Wheatstone's network, it's very easy to find the effective resistance. But in unbalanced Wheatstone's network, in case if they ask question, then these are the only shortcut method by which one can find the effective resistance uh, within uh, the least time, within the least time, okay. The application of uh, Wheatstone's network is in a device called uh, uh, meter bridge. So, in meter bridge, there are two L inverted shapes of metal strips are there, to which there is a wire connected, which is called a meter bridge wire. And on the left hand side, we connect a resistance P, on the right hand side, we connect a resistance Q, and then we use uh, a galometer, and then a sliding contact is used and then for a particular length L, it shows a zero deflection. Since it is a one meter wire, the rest of the length is one minus L. And normally this is uh, known and this is unknown resistance. So meter bridge works on the balance condition of the uh, VCL network and thereby we can find the unknown resistance using P is equal to QL by 1 minus L, where L is in, in meter. So that's the application of the, the meter bridge. Fine. So dear students, I have uh, explained all the important you know, uh, equations related to an important chapter called the current electricity. And before practicing more questions, it's very important to revise these formulas only when you are very thorough with the formulas only then you will be able to attempt more and more questions only then you will find physics uh, very easier so this is my advice a suggestion a request so it's important that you first study the entire synopsis only then start practicing more and more questions thank you